my name is Joel. I am a co-founder and CEO of Prayer AI. And essentially, Prayer is uh, developer tools for monitoring, debugging, and evaluating LLM applications. And so to put that in perspective, some of our customers like Rosie AI, they use us to evaluate their Excel modeling AI agent. And we also have companies like Rapid Claims who partner with doctors and other medical specialists to do medical coding um, classification tasks. And so when we think about the problems with AI, building and improving an LLM product is kind of like whack-a-mole. What we find is that teams are simply shipping so quickly that they need to identify if something goes wrong and then you just try to fix it, you do whatever you think is going to make it work and you keep moving on. And so you end up with a lot of open questions, right? Why, I, why is my model hallucinating? Or, you know, what's causing this weird LLM response? Or how do I improve a particular prompt? And so what we wanted to do is understand that developer tools are really about how do you build a repeatable workflow? Right? And so what a developer tool should do is it should allow me to define a set of processes that can cover all aspect, aspects of my LLM development lifecycle. And so whether that be observability or evaluation and testing or prototyping and debugging. And so that's what we're trying to do with Perea AI. And so I'm going to do the cardinal sin and do a live demo. And to set the stage, um, what we have is a RAG application, right? And this RAG application is simply testing, uh, querying to 10K for Nike, right? And I've run an experiment and I've added some evals. And so now I want to try to improve it. And so here what you're seeing on our screen is our experiments page. And in this experiment, I can see that I have a 75% accuracy rating on my LLM judge, but I have a 100% rating on my target supported by context. And so this 100%, this is a metric that checks the quality of our retrieval. So at 100%, I know our retrieval is working. That step's okay. But with 75%, I realize one of my examples are still failing. So if I look at my graph, I can see that I asked a query and the real answer was supposed to be equipment, but we didn't get that. And so what I want to do from here is think about how do I improve this. The first step may be to create a data set out of these examples so that we can now backtest against this. And so I'll just click all of these examples here. All right, and from here, I can now create a data set. I'll give that data set a name. Let's call it data council rag, all right? And now this has all of the inputs and the targets from those examples we saw, all right? So I'll create that data set. So now this data set exists. If I go to my data sets here, I can see that it was properly created, so that's great. But what I really want to do is first understand why did that one example fail? And so what I can do is I identify that one example, I can click into it, and now we have a trace log. This trace log captures all of the inputs and outputs of my entire chain. So that includes the context that was retrieved, it includes the messages to the LLM, right, as well as any metadata I may add. And once I have this, I might want to open this in the playground so I can start testing it against these inputs. So I click open in playground, and now my goal is to get this thing to work. Now this is a kind of toy example, so I know how I can make it, I can improve this, but let's just quickly open, uh, duplicate this prompt. And what I want to do is on one side, I'm just going to test, does this work if I use like GPT-4? Because we can see that I'm using 3.5 Turbo. And I just heard that Claude Haiku is actually comparable to 3.5 and even GPT-4, so let's try that as well. So I'll go to Claude, and what you realize is I can use a lot of different models, all in Perea in the playground, and I'll just press compare. And so now this is going to stream the response, and I can test to see, okay, is this accurate or not? We can see that we have the answer is equipment, so that's accurate on GPT-4, that's good. And then for Claude, we see that they also have equipment. So Claude was able to do this at you know, 0.001 cents, whereas GPT-4 costs 0.009, and Haiku's much faster. So now I know that I can improve my RAG by using this prompt. How do we do that? I can go to my deployments, right? because I've deployed this prompt. Here I can click it. Now I have the prompt that we're using. We see that the current one that's in production is GPT-3.5. Let's change that to Claude. So I go to edit. 
I swap it over to Claude like we just did. I'll save that. Then I'll deploy it. And so now it's asking me to bump the current deployment. I'll leave a little commit message saying faster, cheaper, all right? And then press deploy. Now this is live. I don't need to redeploy my application. I can actually just go back to my application code and just rerun this experiment. And as you can see from a code perspective, Prey is very lightweight. You just have a trace decorator and this experiment that you need to run. So I'll run this now. And this is going to run um, my data set that was created. Let's call it, it was a uh, DC rag, right? Let me confirm. DC dash rag. So let's say, let's use the data set we just created. And let's call this rag Claude. Okay, so now I'll run my new experiment using the data set we just created. And when it's going to do that, we can then compare the results of this run to our previous run. Okay. So here it gives me a quick summary, but let's go to the experiment page. So now if I go back to experiments, I see that I have my original run and then I have the new run, and let's do a quick comparison. Okay, perfect. So now we see that I have a 100% on my new uh, rag chain. That's a 25% increase and I still have 100% on my retrieval. So I've just improved my workflow. So that's the demo part. So why is this important? What we're really showing you is that I just did all of that, but in a real application, this can be different team members. The rag part of that stack can be handled by someone who's looking at the retrieval eval and tweaking the program until that's 100%, and then the generation part of that stack can be a PM or another team member who's in the playground just tweaking based on the data set. And then once they're ready, you can deploy that pipeline, and now both teams, whether you're in code or non-technical and out of code, can interact. And that's just one example of how you can utilize some of these different toolings to do a full end-to-end -end application. And so I showed you prototyping, I showed you a little bit of evaluation and observability and just a tab of data curation. And so that's how we look at the kind of LLM ops space, right? We start with observability at the core and then we use that to enable you to do different things, whether that be testing and evaluation or debugging iteration. And so our ask is that if you are building a LLM application, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. We'd love to talk about kind of what your workflow looks like and if we can help, whether it be on the evaluation side or just really having the proper workflow in place. Or if you are kind of an investor, we're actually currently raising right now, so I'm also happy to talk uh, to anyone who's interested in the LLM ops space. Thank you.